2, uh, that is once the search space has size 2, you cannot continue in, inside the loop. You will have to ma manually check whether uh, it is f, f low or f low plus 1, which which is a special case in integer turn research. So uh, I have written pseudo code for a double turn research. Because it is doubles, I have not used uh, low plus high minus low by 2, high minus low by 3. Uh, so you can just look at the code and probably write it down or, or probably just look at how things are done. So because it's doubles, I can just write f1 less than f2. And if f1 equal to f2, as he said, I can either move low or high, so it doesn't matter which one I move. And you iterate until you have a required level of precision between low and high. Epsilon is typically for programming context, you, one, uh, 10 power minus 9 is taken as a good value for epsilon. Otherwise, you can probably go for lower values like 10 power minus 12. But sometimes going v too low might lead to infinite loops because of uh, the double precision errors. Is it something like this? They have made here and made here. What are equal? Yeah. You have a zero, right? So you can't put uh, low as maybe. Yes, OK. I'll just draw the same function as you said. Uh, he has defined a function in which we have a function like this. And I have my mid one here and mid two here, right? Like, uh, line. Sorry? My parts line. Mid one equal to mid two. Oh, mid one equal to mid two. Straight Okay. <laughs> In this point, yes, this is. Uh, uh, we'll have to, uh, of course. Uh, you, you, what you're trying to say, what he's trying to say is, if there's a straight line after this point, and if I, I, I just said that if f of f1 equal to f2, I can move any of this. But in this case, if I if I move low this way, then that's an issue. Sorry. Uh, so, of course. The idea is that you are working with convex unimodal functions, and if it's discontinuous, you'll have to take special care on the with, uh, on uh, so on conditions like this. That is only on the equality conditions. That is, if this was even ha if this had a very small slope, the equation would have worked. But otherwise, it can go either ways. That is, you can have like this. So if I say that you move high, then it would fail for this case. If I say if you move low, it, so special case has to be taken for cases like this. We have a concept called as convex functions, uh, which I will define now. So when term research is mostly used is when the function is convex. That is, a convex function is a function which has a graph like this. Let's say this is f of x. That is, the, that is, if I define a point A here, and if I define a point B here, the line between a to B, line between F A to F A comma F A to B comma F B, the curve will lie below or on the line between F uh, on the line between A comma F A to B comma F B. So uh, you can look up at the this is a very mathematical definition of the function, but the the, de the definition is essentially is. Uh, draw a line from a comma fa to b comma fb for any a comma b in the domain of the function you must have the function curve below or at least on the line joining the, these two points not above it so if a function is convex it can be proved that any linear combination of convex functions is also convex so, uh, so we can also turn research on convex functions. Why I dis I'm discussing convex functions is we can turn research on convex functions. X square is a convex function. X square, X square is a convex function, or so any quadratic equation is a X is a con a line is surely a convex function because any two lines will of course be the same line. Any two points between the line will of course be the same line. And I just said that linear combination of convex functions is also convex, which means I can ha so any quadratic equation which is a linear combination of these is again a convex function. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, was there anything I left there? Con yeah, linear com you know. So, uh, yeah, I discussed this before. What does graph of mod x minus k look like? At x equal to k, it, it goes to 0 and then it increases beyond that. So, okay. Now we'll discuss one problem which is actually fairly simple because there's a much 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 more simpler solution but just to get an idea of turn research on non differentiable course i'll just give an example of this one uh, given you must minimize this sum modulus x minus xi summation summation modulus x minus xi that is you are given a set of x coordinates 
and let's assume that you want to create a factory such that it is such that the Manhattan that such that the absolute distance that I have to travel is minimum. So where will you be designing the factory? That is the problem statement can be formulated as I have a I have my x chord x axis here. I have a few points here and I must define I must create I must create my company at some position x such that the total distance that I must travel is minimized. Total distance that I must travel would be this distance plus this distance plus this distance without the negative sign. So the problem is uh, given an uh, given a, an array x of size n, what is summation x minus xi? modulus i from 1 to n at x it will be 0 and both the sides will be the distance at x right. which is the point you are finding uh, but we have multiple points that is uh, let us say it is x mod x minus 2 plus mod x minus 3 uh, which point will it treat 0 that is what you are finding out uh, you will not have 0 in this as I think you will never get zero in this. That is, you will get only get a minima, right? So, uh, what ha that is, if it is just one x mod x minus k, uh, it will it will go to zero at k. But in this case, how the graph would look like is something like let's say there's another term x minus four. So how the graph would look like is something like this: slope decreases and then slope increases. I'll like this something of this form that is piecewise this a graph of this form is called as a piecewise linear graph uh, so so uh, what this graph is again unimodal the graph would either look like this or the graph would look like this and let's say um, the slope that is the consecutive slopes will either increase and decrease and there might be a horizontal line or there might not be a horizontal line and there might be a minima. So is everyone clear that the shape of the graph would look like the first case or the second case depending on whether the number of points is odd or even. How to prove that is uh, assume I am at minus infinity the equation of this would be uh, would be nx minus summation xi equation if you open the absolutes because all abs if I am at minus infinity everything will be of the form xi minus x instead of x minus xi because, because x is minus infinity so I, I the e equation would be of the form nx minus xi then I once I reach the f lowest value of xi the equation would be of the form n minus 1 x uh, minus some constant that is the slope will keep on decreasing will reach a constant and then will increase slope would do that so this function is unimodal everyone agrees that so we can of course turn research on this function is is everyone clear with that idea all right so but uh, can someone tell me a much easier solution to this problem that is of course this can be turn research this is a unimodal function all of this is great but uh, any any easier way any way you can find uh, the required minima that is this point or this point all right uh, so what he says is if it's even uh, we'll have a line like this and if it's odd we'll have uh, we'll have a minima which will be the median of the sorted array and which is correct uh, you can it, it is a very basic exercise to prove that uh, if it is even you will have you'll have a straight line with, with y equal to constant because half of that is what happens is uh, n by 2 terms will be of the form xi minus x and n by 2 terms will be of the form x minus xi so all x's will cancel all you are left with would be a constant so if it's even you'll have something like this if it is odd x's would not cancel so you'll uh, at every point have some slope for x so it would be a minima like this and you uh, if you're if you have some doubts you can probably prove it that it is always the median point okay so this was just to give an idea of how uni unimodal functions crop up in examples which uh, look pretty real world okay so we will go to a proper example it is uh, I am leaving sports problems for practice because we have defined our uh, problems as 
uh, because we have our uh, contest running on spot so uh, i thought uh, i'll make the discussion on a talk power problem so that you can you can use the spot problem for practice and uh, try implementing the research so we have a problem catch the mice on from srm 426 so, uh, you can imagine a, a very big infinite plane and uh, there are mice at mo uh, there are many mice so each mouse is uh, starting from one point and moving along a straight line with some velocity so at any at any point of time all the mice can be fit in a square Okay. okay. So all the mice can be fit in a square. So during the time, uh, as, a, as a time passes, so what is the uh, minimum size of the square cage which fits all the mice? All right. So the mice start from their points and they keep moving in a straight line. So we can imagine they are getting closer and again they move okay. further from each other. So it will be something like okay. Minimum of everyone. All right. So uh, he's actually told how a solution to, but I'll just describe the problem statement again. So the story goes something like this: you are, uh, I think, a part of a circus or something, and there is one guy who has a cage. There are a lot, uh, there is a rectangular board. There is an infinite grid in which there are a lot of mice at at positions which are given initially as x i mice is at position x p of i y p of i. For the sake of the problem, you may assume that mice is a point. That is, it does not have an area. It's just a point, and each mice moves with velocity v in some direction. And we are we are given the velocity definition in terms of its x component and y component. What the objective of the circus owner or uh, this main guy is to give a cage such that his intern or the guy who's who's having the cage is not able to capture all mice at at any point. That is, if I have an infinitely large cage, I just put it down. I have all mice in that cage at some point uh, at uh, t is equal to zero. So at any time t from zero to infinity, if I am not able to cap if if I'm that is I'm given a length L I'm given a square board please know that it is a square cage I'm given a square cage of length L and the problem that I must solve is given the square cage will I be able to capture all my that is I must ensure that I will not be able to capture all mice at any time mice moves in a linear line from uh, XP YP with the velocity VXI with X component VXI and Y component VYI we need a feasible approach to find the length of the largest square cage which cannot enclose. As is the case with most search solutions, what you are asked to find is what you are searching on. That is, what, so what you will be, what you will be writing is a solution in which, given a length, uh, given a time, what the length would be. So, the next slide. Okay. So, first part of the solution, as you said, is. Given a time t, can you find a function f of t, some function f of t, which returns length of the largest cage which cannot capture, assuming the cage is put down at time t. That is, I have an infinite grid, I have a cage above. Assuming that at time is t, is, at time capital T equal to small t, I stop all the mice and then I can just move my cage anywhere and put it. If this is the case, that is, I drop down the, uh, the cage only at time t. If this is the case, can you find uh, can you find the minimum length such that uh, I cannot capture all mice? Uh, so, given a time t, what you must ask, what you must compute is what you must compute is the length of the largest cage such that I cannot capture all mice, assuming I'm putting it at time t. So, yeah, uh, any ideas on how to define this function? Anyone has any ideas on how to define this function other than him? Of course, he is told half a solution. That is. At time t, what all can I know at time t? I can know the positions at time t. Xp plus position, position x would be xpi plus vpi into t. Position y would be similarly ypi plus vyi into t. So I know the position of all, all mice and I need a square which encloses this. What is the length of the minimum square which encloses all these points? Minimum of, minimum of x, maximum of x, yeah. minimum of y, maximum of uh, What of those? Uh, see. Uh, the mice. Uh, the positions of mice, we, are, we know the positions of the mice now. Okay, yeah, you know the positions of the mice now. You say you have a minimum x, you have a maximum x. Mm -hmm. 
you have minimum y, you have maximum y. Now what? Uh, what? Okay, maximum of difference of these two things. All right, so that would be what your f is. F would that that is the minimum length I need for uh, that. So that minus epsilon is something which will not catch up.